everyone. Hi, everyone. You know how much we love aliens. Yes. We love them. Sabrina wants to marry one. Honestly, I don't want to marry one. I want to be taken away with them into space and live my best life frolicking nude with the alien species yes. throughout the universe. Yeah. And here's the thing. We're actively making moves to learn how to get you to that point. Yes. And one of the moves we've made was bringing on Payne Lindsay to talk yes. with us about all things aliens. Because mm -hmm. if you haven't already listened, which I'm sure a lot of people have because we've talked about it so many times throughout our recent podcast episodes, High Strange is a new podcast that Payne has produced and he is the host. And he went around and interviewed and researched all of these incredible yeah. UFO and alien stories. And yeah. actually spoke with people who were abducted, spoke with different personnel who were on site and just tried to kind of get to the bottom of like, what the heck is happening in the world? And he started out with a little bit of a skeptical approach. I mean, you will hear a lot more about his experience in the following 50-ish minutes or so. But uh, it is fascinating to see how Payne's take on all of this did change during the process of putting High Strange together. And also since coming onto our show, we just, you know, threw upon the conspiracy hats onto his head. <laughs> I know. He started to loosen up a little bit. I think we're about to put the tinfoil on and knight him as king. Dub him alien conspiracy. <laughs> Along with so take us. a listen, enjoy, and let us know if you have any tips to get Sabrina abducted. And yes. you can listen to High Strange wherever you listen to podcasts. We love you. Pain. Hi. How the how the heck are you? <laughs> and have you had any potential abductions? Um, I've not been abducted yet. Sorry, I'm disappointed as well. Okay, I was gonna ask how you felt about it. You know, so. I'm hoping and praying for it every day. Me but too. They just me aren't too. listening to me, so I, I don't know what to do. We <laughs> want it we want it too much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're trying too hard. Mm -hmm. You're desperate. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they don't want you to be desperate. They want you to be scared. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm too ready. Do you feel like you're an expert now on aliens? Or do you have a lot of questions still? I have a lot of questions still. I'm not an expert at all, I don't think, on aliens. But I know enough of, like, the basic facts, I think, that are, you know, strong points that make me feel a little bit more informed, you know? If I'm having, like, a conversation at a bar about ufos or something but uh <laughs> that's about it <laughs> which if you went to a bar with us you absolutely would yeah exactly yeah. that's the stuff that comes up right yeah 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 it's that or it ghosts. is that or ghosts yeah the yeah. weird stuff is like you know then you become an expert in that moment but yes that's about it <laughs> you talk your ear off about it or you make a podcast um, about it <laughs> yeah exactly right <laughs> yeah, have you on which you've show. been working You've been working on High Strange for over a year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a, a, a pretty long endeavor. Just like all the people that I talked to and reached out to, like kind of like all over the country and having to, you know, I, I flew out and met most of these people in person. And so that was kind of like a time consuming thing, kind of piecing all these yeah. little things together to make a like a documentary story. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was like, uh, at least a year of my life, like pretty much nonstop. So did you, have you always believed in aliens? What inspired High Strange? Like what got you into it? I didn't always like believe outright. I just thought it was a fun thing to believe. <laughs> you know, it was like a, mm -hmm. you know, I want to believe kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, I just was a fan of sci-fi genre, uh, you know, Steven Spielberg stuff as a kid. Um, you know, I just liked the idea of, you know, it'd be so cool if there was something else out there and kind of just like a fun thing to think about. And so it kind of started from just that general idea of I've always been kind of into this topic. And, you know, what if I took a similar like analytical approach like I would take in a true crime story to this subject? What? will I find or how would that even go? And so that was really what I set out to do. And you found a lot. I found a lot. Actually, I found more <laughs> than I thought I was going to find, you know, and I was 
I guess I was naive, but I, I thought that, yeah, there was so much I didn't know that was, you know, really big stuff. And that was compelling to me. And I, it's, it's since like shaped my perception of it all a little bit. Going into this project, did you have anyone in your life who'd ever encountered a UFO or alien or heard any firsthand stories? Or was this the first time you were actually speaking with people? I've heard stories before. Um, and even just like, you know, my uncle had told me a story from a long time ago. And he's like a straight shooter, no bullshit kind of guy. And he had this story of seeing this UFO in the middle of the night on this desolate road in California driving to work on like one of the oil rigs he was working on. And the way he described it, it was, you know, it made no noise and it was hovering there and it was big and it was so bright. Then it just took off out of sight. Um, you know, so I've heard like other people tell me stuff like that. And, you know, he saw it and he seemed to be like, for certain it was not from earth or something that we're not used to seeing right um so i've heard Where stories in california like it was um like kind of near in between san francisco and la there's like a little town somewhere in there that he that's like on the coast that he okay let me know because that's I a lot of land might... it's a lot of land to <laughs> yeah. cover so it could be a, it'd be a bunch of different places it's a seven hour drive you got to figure it out I feel like I'm I I don't know that this is necessarily the way that I'm going to get abducted, but anytime I hear a story, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to that place and mm -hmm. my chances maybe are increased, but probably not. Yeah, or they're like, Okay, cool, we hit that spot. We're never going there again. Yeah, we're never coming back. Yeah. yeah. Keep you on your toes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta participate in a C E five event. Yes. I think there's an right. Air Force base out there. Is it like the Edwards Air Force Base or something like that? that is in that general vicinity on the California coast. And they have a ton of UFO activity. And I believe, I think the reason it got on my radar was because I believe they thought they saw some Bigfoots walking through one of the Multiple tunnels underneath the feet. base. Big feet, Bigfoots. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, well, I got to go there. Do you but guys believe in Bigfoot? Yeah, sounds like we all, I'm yeah. full on believer. 1000%. Have you all and seen I know, a Bigfoot? <laughs> no, Corinne would yes, love just, to. You've so seen the, one? I would love I, no, I've to not. encounter one. So do you think oh. they're just like hiding out? Like they're just like really good at hiding? Or is there like one left? I don't know. He, he's the Bigfoot? He's like, where's Waldo? I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> there are theories that they I are haven't... interdimensional beings. So mm -hmm. like they are able to jump around like Looper, I guess. That made know. more yeah. sense than just hiding really well behind a tree, right? Right, because they're so huge. Right. Hey, but even Jane Goodall did an interview where she was talking about Bigfoot, and she thinks it's some sort of primitive version of humans that just haven't mm. quite evolved, and there's not a ton of them, and so we just don't encounter them all that frequently. But I don't know. Payne, if you want to do a Bigfoot project, <laughs> I'm really going to be the number one fan. Real, but I know. I, you know. That, that one's a hard one for me to, like, go to just because it's like, OK, yeah, like, it is. What, you know, at least there's better footage of UFOs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that, that's, that's true. true. And there's a ton of footage of UFOs. Who was the first person that you interviewed for this project? The, actually, Strange? the very first person was Travis Walton, which was like, a, oh, you know, one of the wow. craziest stories, I think, in the <laughs> yeah. show. And so that was like my intro to doing a podcast <laughs> on UFOs. I was like, holy shit. Oh my God. If this is like, yeah. is this the tip of the iceberg or is this like the pinnacle of, you know, crazy stories that I'm going to hear? Um, but that having like met him and talked to him in person, I, that kind of changed the way I thought about stuff a little bit. And it only grew from there. Yeah, that's incredible. Uh, okay. So we have, we have talked a lot on our podcast, like theories. Mm hmm. Which, Corinne, I'm going to have you bring up the theory that I've been obsessed with that you've told me now like six times. But mm -hmm. what do you what do you think about Area 51? Like, what do you think is happening there? Um, I honestly don't know. But I, I think that there's something hopefully special going on there because it, it's such a big place and it's really just so secretive and hard to like impossible to get a glimpse of. 
So you would think that if they have something like that with that level of security in the middle of nowhere, that they're definitely at least Something's testing happening. some of the coolest planes that we have, right? Yeah. And maybe more. Maybe there is, like, you know, an alien spacecraft there and bodies of extraterrestrials. You know, I selfishly hope that, but, you know, I, yeah. I have no idea. I think that yeah. because it's so secretive, it's easy to create this sort of lore around it. Yeah. We heard a story. So no one tried to sell you an alien body part or not yet. Like, UFO but like the market's open. Happens. Like, I'm ready to cut the check. I will say, I do <laughs> hope. I hope whatever's happening in Area 51, it's not like cutting them open and studying them like gruesomely or inhumanely. I hope it's like consensual. Or they've died of natural causes. Well, they probe us. us so, like, maybe they're just probing That's them back. You That's know? true. That's true. That's true. But I feel like people generally come back okay, right? That is true, like, right? Yeah, the like they're, they're not in They're pain. totally fine, yeah. What's the story? It was, like, um, three women. I covered this recently, and, of course, I forget their name. Laura Smith or something like oh. that. And they were driving home from a birthday dinner, and all three of them were abducted. And like weird things started happening afterwards they had a lot of like serious ptsd and then like one of them and they had physical electronics ailments. yeah like stopped working around mm -hmm. her and like animals were acting very differently around them that one felt oh, feels a little bit like it was a negative experience after the fact yeah i, mean, I think it's definitely something that's traumatic right like yeah. it's probably so unbelievable when it's happening that it's something like it's like a yeah, a PTSD-inducing experience, for sure. Yeah, and also confusing and very few people to connect with after the fact. <laughs> yeah, or very few people who would yeah. believe you. Yeah, like, if I got abducted by an alien, no one would believe me. We but, will. Oh, well, you just made a podcast <laughs> about it. And I I'm think like, I, I know, I think it's like, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, <laughs> but it really yeah. did happen. You know, no one would believe me. Yeah. We will be your right. support system. Thank if you. you ever get abducted. Yeah. Someone has yeah. to believe me. All of our listeners will believe you. That's for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> All of us together. <laughs> I do wonder, though, because there are so many people that come back with either no memory or just think that their memories are a dream. It was a nightmare. And then there's just these random pieces that make them start to piece together. And then after the fact, realize, oh, maybe I was abducted. Maybe this was more than just a nightmare or missing time. And it does make me wonder if this missing time piece and, and the lack of memory is due to trauma, just like us trying to protect ourselves from what happened. Or if there is some sort of weird thing that like we're sedated the majority of the time that we're there. So there's no way for us to know. I feel like it has to be Or they both. can wipe your memory. Freaky. Yeah. yeah or men it's in black. It's too like, common that the, the memory of it is fuzzy, right? It's like yeah. every single yeah. case. Mm -hmm. So it makes you think that there's something else going on. Like, yeah, if you were to, be under like anesthesia like on earth it's like a similar thing somehow where it's like you're not like you're there but you have to like go piece the memories back together or something every time and when you talked to travis wasn't he he was gone what five days and had only memory of maybe two hours yeah it was like his like in his head it was like a two hour event and then that's when he was Jeez. you know dropped back off and but that was five days later Oh, so do you know, do you know if he was, because I know obviously you have so much more audio that you couldn't include in the project. So do you know for Travis in his case, if it appeared like they were keeping him alive with like water and food and stuff like that, or if he just came back in serious need of medical? So he actually said, I, I don't think it made the cut of the podcast, but he basically said in his own words that he thinks that they saved his life. Like, he thinks that because he was excited and ran out to this flying saucer they saw in the woods and got, you know, struck by some beam that was emitted from the craft, I don't think that was, you know, their intent to do that. And they're probably like, oh, shit. And they just, you know, brought him aboard and, like, tried to fix him up. Um, cause he felt like he was like, when he woke up, he, he like kept saying that he felt like he was dying. Like it was oh. just like, it Jeez. was, he was at the end of his life. It was like physically, mentally, it was like he was shutting down. And, and like, I think it, through hindsight, he believes that they weren't 
there to harm him that maybe they actually saved his life and if you think about it it's like that i mean it, it technically makes sense based on the the version of events that you say yeah i mean we've heard a lot of stories there's one that really really stuck out to me and i can't remember if it was a listener story if we researched it but this girl was severely like very very ill and the doctors could not figure out what was wrong with her and one night she was in the hospital and she remembers like seeing this bright light and doesn't really remember much else but the next morning woke up was completely fine like the and the doctors were like how how did this happen like overnight just like miraculously totally fine and as she started getting older she started having like memories come back about that night and she believes that she was abducted and that aliens saved her wow i mean i guess it kind of makes sense if if it's if aliens are an advanced like you know civilization if they're you know millions of years ahead of us if we just came back to i don't know the 1500s with antibiotics we could save a whole bunch of people um, so it's not crazy to think that if aliens are real and that's what they are, they're, you know, they're more advanced then they would have, you know, capabilities beyond just their crafts, but probably, you know, ways to live longer or forever. Maybe. I don't know. I totally believe that because what, I mean, assuming, I think it's safe to assume that whatever alien species out there, however many alien people, bodies, things are there they're obviously more advanced than us because they can come and go and we cannot we can't <laughs> yeah if they can so come from somewhere we can't they see win. then they're definitely more yeah. advanced <laughs> yes way more advanced so it does make me like i'm not very fearful of an alien invasion and all that stuff that people no. talk about because i'm like what would they even want with us like we are so <laughs> we're we're nothing to them yeah. like, not to be like oh man humans are... that's a we're so special kind of well way yeah of and a lot of people in our world do think that way but we're not we're not, yeah, that we're not really that gonna guys. seriously you see how big the universe injure is? anyone else in the galaxy yeah yeah no yeah the only damage we can do is to ourselves and do our they planet. care maybe yeah. some of right. them just yeah we can but just start our planet we're good at that even... yeah Corinne, will you yeah. share the theory that you've now shared with me many times okay I have no idea where this theory came from. Payne, maybe you have the answer because you've talked to a lot of people okay. within this world, within this space. But there's a theory that aliens are us from the future. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's you've heard this, right? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Okay. So just for anyone who's listening, the like very quick rundown is if we continue to evolve and take into consideration all the things that are happening in the world with climate change and the earth warming perhaps we will have larger eyes and and spend more time going out when the sun is not out because it's too hot and our skin will have a natural sunscreen and suddenly we're kind of this grayish shiny figure with large nocturnal eyes and then we have all this technology and all this knowledge and so our craniums begin to bulge and grow to take in all of this knowledge and then to me at first when i heard this i was like okay but then i started thinking about it and i was like well, who would be more obsessed with us than us, right? Like, we <laughs> totally, already right. are so obsessed with ourselves. We already love yeah. ourselves like, a lot. Oh, there's, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we're like, we're, we're top dog on planet Earth or whatever. So wouldn't it make sense if the aliens that we're seeing coming back and focusing and spending so much time here on Earth, it's just us? Yeah. I mean, Who else wants yeah. to come? I've, it could totally be true. Also, it, it could be true and something else could simultaneously be true. It could, like, there could be a species of us that left this planet at some point and they just come back periodically to look at it like a zoo. I don't know. And then there's, yeah. there's you know, the universe is so big that it, it's there's no way that it's just like us and then there's aliens and they're from Mars or whatever, you know, from some random planet. It's probably so many things that it's would break your brain to think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. It does break my brain. <laughs> it, uh, it breaks my brain. Thinking too. about it right now, I'm. <laughs> but it's like oh, in man. the best way. I don't know. I I think yeah. These types of conversations just we can only like we we don't know what we don't know. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. fun to theorize and hypothesize, and then also understand that what we 
come up with is so small in comparison to like what could be real. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that just mathematically speaking, it would be a bigger anomaly if we were alone in the universe. Not to say that that's not possible. Everything is possible, but that would be stranger than there being, you know, however many races of, you know, extraterrestrials that are more advanced than us from some faraway place that we can't see. Right. Yeah, exactly. And who's to say what they even look like? Like, I always think about this. I'm like, there could be things around us all the time that we just can't even see. There's so much light and sound in our current world that we can't see. So what if there are these gaseous beings that don't even communicate? They're just actually like one being and they're all around us studying us. Yeah. We have no idea. So, I mean, I know you went into I Strange more with a healthy skepticism, right? You weren't full on tinfoil like hat us and believer. conspiracy. Like we <laughs> like, tend to be. We believe everything. <laughs> right. I yeah, I wanted to go into that. Like I wanted people to like want to listen to a topic like this. You know, I, there's so many people that have an immediate aversion to the topic of UFOs and aliens, extraterrestrials probably because it pokes at their, you know, core belief system a little bit. You know, it's maybe it's hard for you to rationalize this with your religion or this with your whatever. I think that if you have like a, a fundament, fundamental understanding of the world around you already instilled that you are comfortable, like comfortable with, then it, it might be hard for you to go there. And instead of, you know, opening the door and, you know, keeping an open mind, some people just shut it out and don't want to go there yeah. at all and so i wanted to i feel like that's yeah very similar to the paranormal world i mean i think mm -hmm. anything in the supernatural we could talk about bigfoot too but it's easier sometimes to not believe because then it it feels scary to acknowledge these things that we don't it does know. yeah you, you, yeah it's not like and a comfortable think, thought <laughs> yeah no yeah. and people can go so hard in the other direction too right where like they suddenly do believe in something like bigfoot or a mermaid or mm -hmm. it an alien that comes to their window every night and abducts them on their birthday or whatever, where they can't pull themselves back from a certain belief and understand that like, we actually don't know anything about <laughs> anything, <laughs> anything. And so like, we do have to still be open, even if we do have our beliefs and some of the things that do seem a little bit woo woo, like our entire podcast. <laughs> but I think that's where Sabrina and I are always like, we're prepared for anything because we're one foot in, one foot out. We're sure, kind of yeah, like, yeah. Which way will we go? We don't know. You're Whatever's open minded and you're ready to, to, yeah, like take on any new information that mm -hmm. you get, right? Or new experience that you have. Yeah. 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 Did you go to any museums during your search? Any like aliens? I went to the, oriented? the UFO Museum in Roswell, New Mexico. Which is pretty mm. cool. I mean, it's a little weird, <laughs> but um, it's yeah, kind of I mean... kind of cheesy. <laughs> but it was fun. Yeah, it, I feel it like was they, like a total thing, right? Like it's like here's this UFO museum in Roswell, and they were actually having a a UFO festival at the time. Oh, and we it, we've heard of that. Yeah, it was actually That's pretty cool. So fun. It was like a you know almost like a local state fair or something. That's like that's what it felt like. Um, it was it was pretty cool, and there was a lot of people there who were dressed up, and it was it was silly, um, but we had fun. It was like uh, like you know where, where the hell are we? We're just like in the middle of nowhere in New Mexico, at this UFO museum, but they actually did have something cool there. They had this um, like library of old books and tapes and like statements and stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of it about the Roswell incident. So we, like we were going through like playing these old like cassette tapes of like different random interviews and stuff. It was pretty cool. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm sure that this is hard to answer, but are there like, if you could pick like two to three things that came out of researching and interviewing and all of the stuff for High Strange that really blew your mind? What would it be? Yeah, I think every major story that I covered, I feel pretty strongly about. Even the the Rendlesham Forest incident. Just talking to these guys all these years later, and they're they're pretty old now. They're in their you know, late seventies, early eighties, and this was a totally strange event that occurred over several days um, on a military base. 
and there's still like not really a good explanation for it. And they don't claim to know what it was specifically, um, but they'll tell you, and you can just tell it in the way that they're saying it, that they believe it was something out of this world, like quite literally. And so those cases to me are super compelling, especially like the further you go back in time. It's like, you know, today we live in a world where it's so easy to, to fake anything. Like it's like every day it's getting easier to fake something. And so it, it makes you like second guess the stuff you see and hear sometimes, um, just like even in a healthy way. But if you go back to like the sixties or something, you can like look at like what was happening that day in history and you can tell where we were technologically. And so if someone's describing like, let's say the Betty and Barney Hill incident, they were describing this craft and this, you know, their alleged abduction. But the way they described the craft was like, you know, saucer shaped, making no noise. Uh, they experienced time loss. And these were like new concepts at the time. Like, like they didn't have really anywhere to draw this from. So they either, you know, made it up and started this whole thing where other people were influenced by their stories or like they're one of the first people to actually have experienced that and it it became a news story. And so it's like, you know what I mean? That's something I'm always curious about is, and maybe you came across this in your research for High Strange, but what is the record, like, is there a record of the very first alien-like encounter before Betty and Barney Hill? I mean, they go back like extremely far, I mean, hundreds of years, um, but you know, the way that they were describing them wasn't like using the words alien or UFO, but you could look at stuff from like the 1500s, you know, reports of stuff that was seen in the sky that, you know, scared people or whatever. And it, the way that they describe it sometimes sounds like what someone claims to have seen today that would be called a, a UFO or a UAP. And if you go back to like in modern history, like, I think the first like big one in American history was this pilot. And I think he kind of sort of almost like coined like accidentally the, the term flying saucer. Uh, he saw like a bunch of these, you know, saucer shaped crafts in the sky flying. And I, it's like from that point forward that that sort of narrative is kind of seen in other places. It's not to say that that wasn't seen somewhere else, but it wasn't being heavily reported or even you know told to anybody and probably for good reason you probably sound pretty crazy in the 20s if you were seeing saucer shaped i mean even today <laughs> people are scared to talk about it right yes something. exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah so that hasn't changed much mm -hmm. and culturally we have no clue how many how much involvement or how many sightings people had you know hundreds of years ago because they could have associated another name with something or called it a, a deity or or something that now in records we look back and we have no idea that maybe it actually was exactly the same thing the people six thousand miles away were also experiencing yeah i mean like so yeah most of the things in history that we couldn't explain back then were explained away by religion in some way or some sort of other like cultural belief and I, so i think that you know ufos were were treated the same way where it's like if you saw some weird light in the sky maybe it was some other like you know scientific thing that we can explain today like some weird cloud or whatever but like you know the stuff that sounds like they're talking about a craft or some light that's moving around that's you know physically there and not just some like you know weird you know whatever i think that it was always explained away like through religion because that's the only way they could do it right but now there's science to apply to a lot of these things that's you know that's way further down the road and it opens the door to say hey well you know we can't really say that this is you know jesus every time so at what point do we start like trying to figure out what this is scientifically and i think we're finally there like all the way what are your thoughts on the sightings that people have coming from the ocean because we always look to the skies and say UFOs, but in recent past, there's been a lot of conversations about these similarly shaped cigar or saucer-like 
crafts emerging and moving through oceans and wa- bodies of water pretty seamlessly. I feel like if you're an extraterrestrial with some advanced craft that can go seemingly anywhere and come from places that we can't see, if you were trying to hide on Earth, the best place to be would be one, like in the sky, in the middle of the ocean, because no one's out there. Sometimes they are, but not not very many people. And if you wanted to hide, just go boop. I mean, what are we going to do? Chase it down to the bottom of the sea? No, we can't even, our planes <laughs> oh. can't even go in there. So it's like See, this is the why, ultimate hiding the more spot. we talk about it, I'm like, I just so badly, like, I just want to be abducted I, or I want to be an alien because <laughs> the two things that I have such fascination of and about is the ocean and space. Like, I just want I know. to experience and understand. I keep more. telling Sabrina, I'm like, you're trying to kill yourself, Sabrina. You're trying to go to the places that we know, like the least about. And if one thing goes wrong, you're going to die. Which is a cool way to but die. But she wants to go. Yeah, I feel we like I want to when... get abducted. But then the second that I am, I'm like, oh, shit, man. Like, I don't really yeah, want to yeah. do this tonight. Yes. You know, like, I, know. I got stuff to do in the morning. <laughs> like, this was a cool idea. Like, I, I know I said I wanted to be ab- abducted. But, like, now I'm here. I'm. It's pretty fucking scary. You're not speaking English to me. I don't yeah. know what's going on. Uh, can Can we go back? Like. Can we have like scheduled this in the yeah, calendar like, so can I we can plan do this at a later right. date? Yeah. <laughs> I think what you guys want is an abduction where you're conscious and it's time bound. So you have like 45 minutes of getting to experience yeah, it. Yeah, let's do this. It's like a Disney World ride. Right? It's like, you know, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, exactly. You can trust it, right? You're not going to die. Yeah. Grab the fast pass. Yeah, your fast pass. Or maybe yeah. <laughs> not the fast pass. You can ride it again if you buddy, want. It's like if system. you finish it early. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe what there's an alien about? listening right now and they're like, wow, what an entrepreneur. That's such a good idea. I'm going to start <laughs> They have a great business, Earth. you know? And now we're going to have... Yeah, let's yeah, start it. Yeah, we would pay big money for that. I do think we need to be abducted first in order to make this agreement with the alien species and then start the business with them. I totally agree. Mm-hmm. Yep. So if, you're, if they're hearing I this, then as this is really a, a business proposition more than anything. Yes. Well, welcome to Two Girls, One Ghost. We uh, often maybe every episode come up with like two to three business ideas and um, forget about them a week later. So Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Living the American dream. <laughs> yeah. I what know. do you think of uh, CE5 events? And have you participated in one or would you? So refresh me on what CE5 events are. Is that where people get together and Kind. communicate or something? Or what, what's the deal with that again? Yeah. So it's, typically like more telepathic communication, but it's actual communication with an alien. So there's different levels of close encounters, you know, where you like see a craft, where you see a being in a craft, where you are abducted, things like that. And then close encounters of the fifth kind is communication, mostly telepathic. And so people will go into the desert, into different areas, and they'll meditate for, you know, two hours. And during this meditation, they'll be getting messages, they'll be getting signs. And people have captured, you know, odd light anomalies in the sky around them as they're doing that or strange energy suddenly appearing behind someone with all the the different almost like ghost busting devices that they bring along. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, I could be completely wrong, but to me, that sounds like total (laughs) bullshit. (laughs) It sounds like... It, you know, it's like, cool, yeah, if you get high enough, you'll see what, whatever you want to see, to be honest. Um, yeah. It, it, or if you deprive yourself, if you're in some, you know, sweat lodge, you're going to see some weird shit. Um, yeah. I, but also, like I said, I, I could be completely wrong. They could be, they could have figured it out. And they're communicating with these aliens. I'm over here making fun of them. Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> I would give it a try to see like what's going on and you right. know, give you my own assessment of it. Um, but yeah, I have no idea. But also that there's stuff like even with taking drugs sometimes that is weird. Like if you take DMT, everyone sees like the same kind of, right. you know, creatures. Yeah, we did a whole episode whatever. on and ayahuasca. Like, why and it was, is that? I is went that... in kind of thinking yeah. like, okay, this is, this is bullshit. You know, like people are just getting super high and tripping balls. But it is so strange. It's like, <laughs> right. how does everyone see the same thing and experience the same thing? Well, 
that's the hard thing is like what we use very minimal percentage of our brains like are we by using those you know chemical drugs I'll just say are we expanding our use of our brain and there's no way necessarily to know 100 percent or are we somehow like bridging true. some gap or like slipping mm-hmm. between the cracks just for a second or just mm-hmm. seeing beyond yeah. the veil or something right right um it's doing yeah. something to your brain where you can like you know if it was like a dimensional thing you're getting a glimpse into like you know the other yeah. side of the mirror or something right yeah and there've been a lot of conversations about the possibility or that we've heard that there's a chance that perhaps abductions exist on the astral plane in some way and so there is this like crossover between aliens and the paranormal or like, you know, souls, however you want to believe in it. But, you know, I've astral traveled accidentally, but like I have fully felt and seen myself outside of my body mm-hmm. and I haven't done it since because it was really scary, but it does make me wonder, like, what are we capable of outside of our bodies and just more of like as our soul and our energy? Probably a lot, you know? Hopefully we uncover more definitive proof of anything in our lifetime, but I think that there probably is a lot of potential in our own brains that, yeah. you know, one day, and maybe AI will help us get there, right? We'll, we'll, like, help, like, just make that accelerate even faster than it is now. But, yeah, like, the remote viewing stuff, and, like, and this is stuff that, like, the government's actually looked into. <laughs> you know, like, they're not, like... They don't all think it's totally crazy. There's something to it, but we just haven't figured it all out yet, right? We haven't put like a, you know, we haven't been able to to press a button and it just happen, right? Or like be able to create how to use this to our advantage all the way. Another theory that I really love uh, is, and Kran, I think you told me this, but there was someone who said that they are really good at astral traveling, astral projection, and they tried to access Area 51. And when they got there, there were astral bodyguards that chased her yeah. So it's away. psychically protected as well. And that she <laughs> right? had a, almost like... The, that would be wild. The movie... I keep, we keep saying Looper, but it's not Looper. It's that one movie where they like look at photos and they like... Ju- jumper. It's Jumper. When they jump into different photos. But she said... Is it, <laughs> is it not Looper? Is there is it? I guess is they're Looper, very, Looper very similar. But she said Looper she had to think of similar to that one movie where she had to think of a place and then would jump into it and then they would chase her. They chased mm. her through all of these different locations all over the world in her astral body on the astral plane. And wow. so eventually she shook the tail, but she was like, Yeah, so you can't actually go anywhere, even if you do Damn. feel like you've mastered astral projection, which is so freaky because Right. Like, or maybe they've figured it out enough to where, like, they're ready for, you know, if you get to that Mm -hmm. level in the game, then level up in the simulation. There's going to be a couple guys you got to defeat here at the door. (laughs) Right. Yeah. If I had all the time in the world, I would every night do a CE5 event just to see, you know, or, you know, practice meditating every day, really get in touch with my astral self and just see where it takes me. Yeah, that sounds awesome. You know, in order to do that, you'd have to not have to work <laughs> at all, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, you'd have to have Karen, no you got job. Podcast, yeah. Just right? start yeah. I'll talk to you. In you a can year. live yeah, stream. That would be amazing. Live stream though. it. People will pay you. You can make anything a job these days. Yeah, right. Yeah. Me just, just pay meditating. me to live stream this exactly. and it's my life. Yes. Yeah, just me meditating all day. Is there yeah, one it's thing? Worth it. I know. Another business idea. Pain, right. is there one thing that you went in <laughs> really kind of being a little bit more stubborn heels in the ground on that you flipped on after talking to people? I think just the magnitude of the whole thing. Uh, like, just how many stories there really are. And there's so many stories that it becomes something that's hard to even rationalize why there'd be this many stories if they were even all made up like it's there's so much going on and even stuff like the roswell event like in my head that was totally like this 
is some bullshit. This is some conspiracy theory thing. You know, we've all heard about this, but it didn't take long looking into the actual documents of stuff. And I'm like, did this actually happen though? And, you know, I found the old like radio show that announced that a saucer had crashed. And I just started thinking logically about it. And I got to this point where I was like, if this was all literally nothing, if it was just a weather balloon, like they're saying, then it wouldn't have even been a story, really. Yeah. Like, no one would have even talked about it because it wouldn't have been anything. Like, this flimsy weather balloon lands in the middle of the desert. I mean, if that happened today, no one would know about it. Who cares? And so the, the government response to it all was pretty telling. And then I also found, this is was like halfway into this, the series. This came out a couple months ago. But Australia released these documents that pretty much revealed that, surprise, they also, like other countries, look at what we're doing, like we do what they're doing. And they, back in the day, were perplexed by the whole Roswell incident and the way that it was, you know, being handled in the media and just the, the secrecy behind it and just the oddities that surrounded the story, that they did their own investigation as a country. And they concluded that something definitively happened and that it was likely, you know, saucers that crashed or a saucer that crashed there and that there were beings. Oh my God. In Hell yeah, the Australia. Craft. And I'm like, damn, wow. that's the uh, that's yeah. another government saying that that's what they think right. we found. And it's funny that they, <laughs> second they opinion. also thought second opinion, government right? was great. filled with a bunch of bad actors and had to do their own investigation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was just too weird, right? It is like, strange. Yeah. I have multiple questions. But first, is there going to be a season two of High Strange? And then second, were there any stories that maybe you didn't include in season one because you were like, I don't believe this to be true. Season two, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a season two. Uh, there's Good. enough stories. <laughs> I think that the mm -hmm. appetite is there, you know? Yeah. I want to make a season two. But, it, you know, it, I always do it would come down to the audience wanting we a want season two. A season two. I think that well, we want the response has been two. positive enough. <laughs> if y'all want to keep going down this rabbit hole with me, I think we could do it, right? And I think there's yeah. a lot more to explore. And I already have some ideas of, you know, how we could, you know, immediately take it from episode eight to another thing. Um, yeah. What was your second question? It was about... Were there any stories you didn't include because y you had a feeling that they were made up or, or not real? Um, nothing that I thought was, like, made up in the sense that I think this person's lying through their teeth to me. But there were some stories that were so weird and just so kooky sounding that even if they were telling the truth, and I can tell you that they seem to believe what they were saying, for whatever that's worth, that I'm like, I don't even know. Like, I, I, I want to focus on the strongest cases that have the most data, that have audio tape that you can hear, just like the strongest cases that I could find to be able to open up a real conversation about it. If I hit you over the head with all these this you know this kooky stuff, then it, it's gonna be, you know, what am I in for? What are we what are we doing here? And so I think that we can eventually go deeper down and explore some of these things. But I didn't think that that was the best way to to tell this kind of story because I was trying to really make the anti UFO UFO podcast where it's not made for the believers because they're gonna listen to it either way, right? Yeah. But it's made for people who are like, nah, I don't know. What's well, like people well, who are uncertain. Then, Listen right. to this and tell me what you think. And and want to learn more about it, but like right. kind of in the privacy of their own headphones. So that, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right. You don't have to join yeah. the club, right? You, you can be exactly who you are and just be mildly curious, right? Just, just have an open mind enough. And that's okay. I, I get that you don't have the time to, to think about this all day. It's like, you know, I was able to afford to do that, which is like, you know, I'm doing it for you. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm helping you out. Like, I already did that. But I'm just giving you the stuff and you tell me what we you think. We have a listener, you talking about the the need for some additional evidence for some of the cases. 
to be included. That makes total sense. And there was this one listener who emailed us whose husband, I believe, thought perhaps he and some of his friends were abducted and sent us a, what was it? It was like a 30 minute long audio clip or something like that. And it was audio or it was a video, but it felt like it was, it was basically all dark except for like a few weird flashes of light. So it was mostly audio. They lost a solid like two or three hours of their evening and have no idea what happened. But suddenly this group was still in the woods again. They were like hunting or camping or doing something. And they were, they found themselves back there and just thinking it was odd and found this recording on his phone later and the first five minutes and the last five minutes have noise and it's like this whooshing like whoa, 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 whoa. sounds like a engine or, or almost what you would think like a ufo to sound like and then in the end you hear like a right, yeah. Yeah. thump like he's being so thrown it, back on the ground though. like he basically is being dumped and you hear the whoa, whoa, whoa. and you hear the car door open and close like it's almost as if like someone's entering a, the vehicle. And then in the beginning, there's a weird like old timey's radio esque voice asking yeah, it was like, Where are if the they children? have any children. It was super creepy. We'll send yeah. it to you. What? We'll send it to you. Please send it to me. Yeah. What kind of video is it? Like what kind of it's file? From is it? phone, like, so is it's from like, a phone, so it's probably like like, like kind of phone is it from? or whatever the the M four A, whatever the iPhones are, I think. Yeah, I'd be curious if it was an iPhone video, if there was like anything in the metadata that like said where it was recorded yeah. at. Yeah, like we didn't look at any just, of that. <laughs> you know, try to check and just like, it okay, said, that checks out or this checks out, like whatever, right? His original videos were on an iPhone 1 or something. So they had to be split into two when he tried to share them. And our listener is from um, Baylor, said that anytime she would try to share it with people, like, it would get deleted and her like her computer would react in certain ways. Weird. Yeah. She's rocking an so iPhone have a, one over back there? in the day. Uh I guess this was back in That's badass. Let's see. Twenty sixteen. Okay. I'll send it to you. Um but we also okay, we have so many emails from listeners. But I bet you there do, is yeah. one we read recently that I was like, okay, I'm gonna read parts of this to pain and see what your take is yes. on it. So this is from our listener Kin. And it kind of seems like Kin is in the same, or her experience was a little bit of like astral projection. Mm -hmm. But, okay, I'll read you a couple of things. She says, the first thing I remember is being on board a large craft somewhere in space. This wasn't just a ship. It was more like a space station that accommodated dozens of its crew members and departments, which seemed to be a combination of scientists, technicians, aerospace engineers, and the like. I was intuitively made aware that this is the life they were used to for generations, and they were no longer inhabiting one single planet, but were voyagers to other star systems. I was moving down a long, narrow card corridor with laboratory rooms along the left side that I could see into. Walking on my right side was this being who was giving me a tour of the facilities. He looked very much human, resembled a regular human man with dark hair, but he was slightly taller and dressed in some kind of uniform just as other crew members were. And then he started speaking to me telepathically. He proceeded to tell me that they were collectively working for generations. It was a team of advanced scientists dedicated to preserving the record of all life on Earth and other planets across different galaxies. In other words, every creature that has ever gone extinct in our Earth's history wasn't actually extinct it was very much thriving on another planet somewhere else in the universe due to this group of people's experiments. Let's see. They said they would collect DNA samples and preserve the animals that were going extinct. Then they would replicate it in their lab and release it to one of their many charted Earth-like planets, which they kept track on on a very complex interactive map of different star systems. As we continued to walk down the long corridor, I noticed that these lab rooms on my left were actually specimen chambers that it contained live creatures that were being held there temporarily. Some of them were so strange looking and seemed so alien, I remember thinking, that is not an earth creature. To which the being who could detect my thoughts replied, you're right, these are life forms from other star systems. That's That's wild. basically the essence of it. And then there was, she talks about one part where she a sees red like fox. a fox-like creature and the being told her that it was a red fox that was going extinct on earth 
and they were going to help repopulate it. And when she came back from this experience in, in her waking life, she looked it up and the red fox was back in like, I don't know, 2018. There was a whole report about how they were going extinct. And then a couple months or years later, all of a sudden there was like a massive population found in a certain area in the United States. Weird. Did she ever ask this person or person a alien? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Why she was there? It's like this seems like a very cool tour. Like, man, like this is VIP access. Why me? Yeah, I don't know. She had been on. So we we have something called Campfire Stories where we do live stories with people and she had come on before and shared some of her other alien encounters and there was a time where she felt or it, thought that she experienced an alien coming in through her window and essentially microchipping her. So she is part of some sort of longitudinal study or or a marked one who yeah. So maybe she's part of yeah. she's like one of the studies, right? And they're just, you yeah. know, telling her what's yeah, going totally. on a little And bit. so I mean, yeah, I, don't again, know. I, I know. hope that's true. Right. I hope she's okay. I know. And how many yeah, which humans <laughs> have been marked cuz obviously there are some species of animals from every single planet all being collected so that makes me wonder like are there humans in cages somewhere <laughs> there Whew. right yeah i mean <laughs> shit, maybe but there are a lot of missing people yeah you know? yeah and some so of them right. they never find so it is freaky yeah. though because in the beginning you were saying that yeah, what if know. we're the zoo and it does feel like that often but it's also interesting mm -hmm. to think of this experience where can in astral form or or at least felt that she was in astral form was somehow abducted and was watching like another type of zoo happen and then it makes me curious about like what is this alien faction of of these researchers and these people i we, we all keep calling them people these beings that are so focused on sustaining life yeah. despite what might be happening on the planet where those things are from. So they're not just necessarily letting us wipe ourselves and other things out. But why? Why not? Yeah, I mean, if you become that yeah. advanced, like it's like you're running out of things to do. It's like you're, right. this is what you do now because you're capable of doing it. I feel like if any species of anything, like if if another species of anything becomes, you know, significantly more advanced than us, then we become the zoo kind of automatically. It's like if there is a, at your local zoo, like in your city, if a zebra gets out, right? They always find that thing. He's always coming back, you know? It's like, doesn't matter how far you go, it doesn't matter. It's like, there's a similar analogy with like, if there's a, a spaceship that comes down to earth, we can't chase them out of here. It's like, cool, see ya. Like, what are you gonna do? Come to my, star system nope and it's like okay we're kind of powerless in that way so it's like there's you know there's really like no incentive for them to do anything like totally messed up unless there's like you know a group of bad ones that likes you know that likes to do evil shit and right. a part of me hopes that the more advanced that you become as a as a species that you know the the dangerous ones get weeded out. And so you kind of become like more advanced. Or like, what they consider like to that, be dangerous you know, could be anymore. so I do like that. Like beyond our scope of understanding too. You know, they're not focused on. Right. It's like not even, yeah, it's like exactly. not even worth their thought. I just, it does give me a little bit of faith in, I mean, I can't, I guess I can't say humanity necessarily, but in the future, just this idea that, ego gets put aside and it's about there's just goodness everyone has a positive mm -hmm. hobby I, and for, I, I, for some I like aliens, that it feels their hopeful. hobby is yeah. collecting animals <laughs> from all the different galaxies it's their own little trinkets yeah that's like yeah, I also it's like I like babies, to think that we yeah. we're also like their reality tv show <laughs> we're just they they kind of come in just to see what's up they well, watch in the Truman a show right now yeah, right? It's a simulation of We're sorts. close to figuring we're, out. They're like, oh just... my God, are they going to do it? 
It's like, no, nope, <laughs> I'm not. And they're like, oh. I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah. It's like next week on Human <laughs> Race. Earth. Earth. I did yeah. see someone make the analogy the other day where, where there was someone online who was who was trying to kind of like dismantle or or just give some counter arguments to what we often say, which is like, why don't the aliens just introduce themselves to us? Why haven't they come? Like, we're, we're peaceful, whatever. Like, why don't we know them? If they're so much more powerful, so much more advanced, why haven't they made themselves more known? And someone did basically say, well, if you were that advanced, why would you be so interested in what's happening here? Like, how often do you go up to an anthill and say, hello, my name is Corinne and start to engage with them and try to know them? And you don't. Most people don't. And so... Mm -hmm. that was my analogy oh, was it or at when least I, was, I made that analogy okay then it was you strength. I was listening like, to yeah. High Strange <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah like unless you're on shrooms right it's like Pain, that was it was you in my ear yeah. I, I, I believe that yeah though. yeah it's like one of my friends said this to me on the phone it's like well yeah no <laughs> no that got me though um yeah that stuck I, with me, I, I believe I like, that though that makes total yeah, sense it's like that's real I have to tell you I saw a UFO once and I'm gonna tell you my UFO story it's did you? not super exciting, <laughs> but I did think I was going to die. So <laughs> it was traumatic for me. Really? Wow. Um, okay. It was in Los Angeles. It was <laughs> in Westchester on Colegio oh, Drive yeah. in LA, if anyone lives over there. But it's up on a bluff. So the bluff looks over Marina Del Rey. You can see the ocean. You can see the marina down below. Um, so it's basically like a cliffside house. And it was the house I was living in in college. It was daytime, maybe like 2 p.m. I lived amongst six other women and there were a few friends coming over. And so maybe in total, there were there were like five of us, six of us in the house that day. But we were all just sitting upstairs. The living room was upstairs so we could see through all of the windows, like a coastal beach house, see everything. And there was a giant flash of blue light that came through all of the windows and kind of like blinded us for a second. And my first thought was like, oh my God, LA is being bombed. Like I literally was like, we're under attack. We rush to the window and there's nothing. We see absolutely no activity. There's one helicopter down in Marina Del Rey, but when is there not? And so everything seemed ordinary, but we could see out in the distance two little white lights just kind of like hovering over the ocean. It looked like maybe they were 20 miles off the coast. And we go out to the balcony, which is on the second story, and we're looking at these dots. And then to the left of us, someone notices that there's a freaking UFO. Like truly, it looked like if you drew a UFO, except it wasn't silver. It was all black. It was super matte black. Like a saucer had the lights down below. It was maybe a quarter mile away. It was so close. And we could see it perfectly. So I was like, oh my God, it can see us perfectly. My roommate Taylor went to go get her film camera, wanted to film it, which... I think everyone here would be like, yes, yes, fill me evidence. I begged and pleaded her not to film it because I was so scared that they would know we were filming and abduct us. I was crying. I texted a goodbye text to my parents. I was like, if I go missing, I was abducted. Like we were truly watching this UFO for maybe four minutes. At one point, all of us must have collectively looked away from it. And when we looked back, it was gone. And... We look out to the ocean and there's now a third light in the ocean. So it, it we assumed it was that craft basically in the split second zooming to the other UFOs. How big do you think it was? I'm like not good at estimating size. It's hard but to say, I would say like... maybe the size, maybe like the width or, or the length of like two Greyhound buses stacked against each other it was big it was okay. really big wow so when you looked at this you just instinctually felt that it was something you know different i mean and it wasn't moving like, it, it made it scared you because you just instinctually knew something right it's like you didn't know what it was but something you knew like your instincts were telling you something that was like hey this is like wh why'd you freak out is it because you felt like this is this is this is the real yeah. deal of something not yeah it was from so here? close or, i or think what was your like i think if it was further thought? away 
I might have been like, yeah, film it. But it was so close that it was like if this thing had eyes, it could, we were making eye contact. Like it saw the the cluster of yeah. the five or six of <laughs> yeah, us out yeah. on the balcony staring up at it. It was so close. There were no trees, like maybe one palm tree obstructing our view of it. It was perfectly close. And it wasn't very high in the sky either. Like it was, it was I don't know, maybe 40 feet above the house like the the rooftops so i think it was just so close so that close. i was so freaked out that it very clearly knew and could see us and if we did anything that could have seemed like a threat to its existence what what is our defense my plastic broom from target like that's all i have Nothing. on me like, <laughs> this isn't gonna right. work that so it was work. more of like a fight yeah. or flight of like okay this thing is aware of us i'm sure mm -hmm. and if it's not it can become aware of us in a split second and we have no chance against it so i'm not taking yeah. it i'm not risking it when did this happen 2014 or 15 because that those are the two years that i lived in that house have you ever like looked up the date to see if anyone else like posted a video I, or something for or, like, months had because you would think someone yes, else would have seen for it for months i yeah. i looked up even the blue flash was constantly looking up like right. did anyone see a blue f flash in the sky no just anything nothing. that you it was find, only yeah. the group of us right there no couldn't find it and uh, i guess in our defense like we didn't put it online like we didn't write anything online about our experience so true right right but that's another thing that's so interesting to me because i feel like there are certain instances where collectively an entire town or multiple people will see something but then also there are other times where like just one person sees something and we've even had stories where multiple people were together and just one person was seeing it. So it's like, is it us? Like, is there just like a weird glitch where we're able to see something yeah. that we're not usually supposed to see? Like that one or piece of glass who can that people say it? is it's... outlawed or whatever that you right. can see through the, through the veil. Right. Maybe some people are just naturally better at seeing something that's probably designed to be able to camouflage itself pretty well, yeah. right? But also it could just be a total just like by chance, like, you know, it just happens to be in this specific spot in the sky at this hour, and maybe only certain people were close enough to see it the way that you did, and maybe there wasn't really that many people, and they just have a similar story to like as you do, but that's it. It's like, okay. It's like, even if y'all all saw it. And even too. You still know what it is. It's like, like y'all can all see it. Living in a city too, I feel like there's so much that we just ignore. Because there's so much that happens around us. Like a giant flash of light or a loud boom yeah, and crash. Yeah, exactly. How often am I actually going to the window to see to see what's going on? Yeah, there, 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 could, yeah. Be the, there could be the craziest shit yeah. come, like, happening in, outside my, <laughs> in my front yard right now. Unless it makes a, right. a loud noise. No idea. I, I have no idea. Yeah. So I people, yeah. Not, but despite like, the population <laughs> that you would think yeah. would see this, I feel like it was around people who have blinders up because we're just used to ignoring all the chaos that happens around us yeah so very true i think that's well, we're just, just a, looking that's down yeah. our scrolling on yeah. tiktok yeah. thought it was part of the video mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah they're like that's pretty cool uh she had this yeah. instagram post though <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> <laughs> meme you're like oh my god <laughs> my family good, did grow up though <laughs> around where betty and barney hill were abducted and we used to go yeah, so my my dad's from right there. And then I grew up like two and a half hours away driving. And in the summer, we'd go out on the boat. And I saw it multiple times throughout my life. But we would look up at the stars. You know, you look for shooting stars. And you catch the satellites going across. And then every so often, there's a star that goes, zoop, 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 zoop. So, yeah, my like, mom was always like, what's oh, that one? Yeah. So, <laughs> I didn't think they were scary until I... Saw like, that one in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. Raised, raised, raised to believe. believe. Yeah. <laughs> right. Do you, okay, do you have a favorite alien movie and do you watch alien type movies differently now after doing all the work for High Strange? There's like, I, I feel like there's not enough good alien movies. They're, they're always like, they turn into, you know, they have machine guns on a spaceship and they're like, bah, it's like, it's always like this crazy ridiculous thing um, destroy earth yes yeah. yeah, it's, it's like a aliens. different kind of narrative that i i don't really like i'm not super yeah. into um i think that there's a couple like classics like contact was good 
Um, there's a movie oh. called Vast of I'm Night. I'm going to write this down. I've this never heard cool. it. Hmm. You'll hear uh, That's no. really cool. It's like they're basically like, I think it's in the 40s or 50s. And they're like a small town. They have this like local radio station, almost like a podcast. But like they're getting all these stories from residents of people seeing something in the sky. And they're kind of building this narrative of something's happening. And it like ends like pretty crazy. Um, it's like super oh, suspenseful cool. and like, you yeah. know, keeps you going. It's not like a sci-fi action movie. What's that one that came out Did years ago? Did you watch ago? Arrival with huh? Amy Adams? It came out. That's what I was thinking of. Yes, Arrival was good. Yeah, that's a great one. one. I I like the, they kind of like flipped Mm -hmm. it a little bit. It was just a good movie, Mm -hmm. right? I wish there were more like that. Um, Like those are like the best ones. I I might be leaving one out. Can't go past a cornfield um, without thinking of Signs. Signs was great. As a kid, I loved that movie. And too, the the scene where the knife goes underneath, where they put the knife underneath the crack of the door to see the alien body reflection. I think about that every single day oh, because every yeah. day there i see a crack under the door and i think of that scene because it scarred me i also saw it when i was like eight. Oh yeah exactly i was a kid I, I i used to have a signs movie poster in my room did you used to love that movie mm-hmm. oh, so i watched good. so i was such a scaredy cat growing up so i saw a scary movie which was making fun of <laughs> right. signs. that's how you saw signs and first yeah that's how i saw signs first oh <laughs> uh, yeah I think that's actually how I saw Scream first. I, I never like I, I don't think I had seen Scream before I watched the first scary movie. And then I couldn't oh. then Scream was forever <laughs> different to me. Like, right. Yes. I think I, that's the same for me too. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know we could probably talk about aliens for forever, but this is a paranormal podcast. It is. And you told us that you had a ghost story. So would oh, you yeah. want to share it with everyone else? Yeah, so this is, it's kind of long, so I'm, I'm going to, like, go over the basics here. So this this happened, and I, I say ghost story, I don't know. There's some, There was just something weird going on, right? I don't know what it is. This was probably at least 10 years ago. I was living uh, in an apartment with my girlfriend at the time, no longer together, but this, we lived in an apartment uh, that we had just moved into in Atlanta, it was nice. It was a newer apartment, like in an up-and-coming part of town. I had an office that I worked at when I was doing, like, film stuff before I made podcasts. And I was there late one night. It was, like, 2 in the morning. And I was on the way home. And she calls me. And she's super quiet on the phone. And she's like, hey, are you on the way home? I was like, yeah, I'll be there in, like, 15 minutes. She's like, okay, can you hurry? And I was like, yeah, like, is everything okay? She's like, yeah, I'll tell you when you get here. And I'm like, what? And she hangs Super out. ominous. And I'm like, what the hell am I walking into? I'm like, yeah. so now I'm like on high alert. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, is there someone in the apartment? Like, is this like a bad, what is happening? So I sped my ass all the way to my apartment complex. And I get there and she's just sitting on the edge of the bed in our room. And I'm like, what's going on? And she said that she was putting her clothes away in this dresser and she was like on the floor like doing that and she said all of a sudden she felt a hand on the back of her like shoulder like a I was like what do you mean I'm like like a physical hand she's like yes and I was like okay well you know what anything else happen and she's like yes I got freaked out and so I I you know closed the, the dresser drawers and I sat in the bed under the covers and then this you know floor lamp fell over onto the uh bed and I was like really and I go over to the floor lamp and I'm like you know it's pretty sturdy it's not really going anywhere unless you push it and I was like fuck man I was like (laughs) this place haunted I'm like what what are we doing and I was like I was immediately freaked out because I'm like she's not making this up and I'm like, right. I don't know what to do. And so I end up, you know, I didn't sleep at all that night, I don't think. And from that point forward, weird stuff just like kind of kept happening. And, you know, the only thing I ever experienced was like a couple things. It was, uh, you know, I went to like from my room to the kitchen and I came back out and went right back. And then the refrigerator door was just wide open. That, and I'm like, I did that's not do straight that. up paranormal I'm like, activity. What the hell? 
and then one time my friend came over and he was like um he slept out like he like we like got drunk or something and he slept on my floor and i woke up or he and he was on the floor and he's like I'm like what the hell happened here this pot like this potted plant had like it was that was huge had somehow like tipped over and like broke and i'm like are you fucking with me dude like did you do this and he's like no man like and he was freaked <laughs> out and so it was around that time that i called my uncle and i was like okay <laughs> I think my house is haunted, dude. And like he's like a very kind of like spiritual, like hippie guy. He's like, all right, here's what you need to do. You need to get some sage and you need to like do all this stuff. So like you know, I get sage, I'm burning sage, and and then someone told me like something random that like if you take a uh a cup of water and you put a knife in it, that it'll they'll go away. And I was like, whatever, I'll try it. And so I yeah. did that, right? And I, my girlfriend went out of town with, with some of her girlfriends that weekend. And so it was just me there. And it was a first night by myself was fine. And I was like, okay, maybe it's, maybe it's gone. Right. Then in the middle of the night on the second night, this is probably like, again, like one or two in the morning, I hear this blood curdling scream, like the loudest scream I've ever heard in my life. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? And so it was coming from like outside my apartment, like in the hallway. And so I opened the door. Wait, sorry. Was the was your knife still? It was. In... Yes. So the yeah. So the knife thing seemed to be working, and then I hear this scream that's not inside my apartment, but just outside of it. And I open the door, and there's several other neighbors who were looking out, and there's this guy who was actually my next door neighbor, and he was running around screaming that he wanted to kill himself. And I was like, holy shit! Like, what do we do? And so we're, you know, trying to tell him to calm down. It's all good. Someone calls the police, you know, paramedics show up. They end up taking him away. And I was like, holy shit, that was insane. And so my friend was coming in town the next morning. We were going to a, a, a football game. I was like, do you won't believe what happened last night? It was so crazy. And I was telling this whole story. We go to the game and then we come back that night. And it's probably like 7 or 8 p.m., just getting dark. And then I hear... Uh, I went, went to my car to get my chapstick or something random. As I'm walking back to my my room or my my apartment, uh, I can hear like the same kind of screaming coming from inside my neighbor's apartment. And I'm like, is he in there? Is like, is he back from like the hospital? So I put my ear to the door, and I could just hear him like you know like talking to himself, screaming, like having like a, a you know like a, a episode of something, right? And so I was. I, I thought he was going to kill himself or something. So I, I bang on the door like, hey, like, are, are you OK? Just got completely dead silent. And I was like, uh oh, I'm like, are you, are you good? And I was like, what the hell? And so uh, just so happened that like in that moment, <laughs> me and my friend were trying to buy some weed from one of my friends. And we're like, we had to go right now. And I was like, I had a bad feeling in my stomach. And I was like, OK, it was like down the street. And the whole time I was thinking, I was like, I don't, do I need to call the police or something? I was like, I don't even know how much do I insert myself into this? And so we were gone for like 20, 30 minutes when we get back. And as soon as we have, I pull up to the complex, there are police cars, there is an ambulance. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? So I go into my apartment and I go to the balcony. And this guy had jumped off the balcony and like pierced his, like his face in this fence and they were getting him out with the jaws of life and he was he was still moving around i was like this guy what the fuck just happened and scary as hell the guy actually ends up surviving um miraculously which is amazing but he's you know not in great shape though and this is and i think that they his family eventually like, sued the hospital because they let him out too early on their like i guess you know suicide watch like hold or something and it's been a thing that i've been like periodically reminded of because you know they've used like my 911 call in the in the take like, in the court and like all this stuff and i was like the only guy who had like a first hand account and it was like in hindsight that and maybe there's no relation at all but it felt like there was something in my apartment that was fucking with us that was not being like super friendly at all like 
And the second it seemed to go away, this guy has this, you know, mental break. And maybe it's totally unrelated. And it was just totally like a mental health thing, right? That would make more sense. But the timing of it all was so weird to me. And it's like, I just can't help but like, you know, look at that as like, that was the timeline of events. It was, this was happening that was bothering us. It went away. Then this happens. His family is like, what the hell? Why is he acting like this? And I'm like- And it's almost immediate. Like immediately. one night you're fine. Mm -hmm. And then the next you're waking up to your neighbor. And, and up until that point, you had not had any occurrences like that with your neighbor, right? No, I'd never even seen my yeah. neighbor. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, and like that was my only encounter. And it was like a total shock that he, you know, was yeah going through something like this, right? I, I mean, yeah. And so I, I have no idea, you know, what was really going on. I was kind of, you know, I was in the dark pretty much the whole time, even till right, it took this day. Yeah. But, you know, to me, I'm like, there's a part of me, it's like, I wonder, like, I still don't know what happened in my apartment with all that weird stuff that was going on. And it didn't seem like it was a friendly thing. Mm -hmm. And it went right. away, and then the next thing you know, like, you know, my neighbor next door has this, like, you know, episode that ended, like, very badly. And I'm like, is there any yeah. relation there? Or is it just totally coincidence? And how do you know? Like, you know, now I'll you're just never know, wondering. Right? Yeah. And it's, like, yeah. not like I'm a theory I want to okay. peddle right. to anybody. Like, I'm not going to go, you know, yeah, I have no proof right. of that. Well, but, and like, both, it was both weird. things can be true, you know? too, because right. we, we hear this so often in emails that we get from our listeners and also just in researching various haunted places and haunted homes and and things like that that dark energies these like poltergeists these entities are attracted mm -hmm. to vulnerable vulnerable situations and vulnerable people so if someone is going through some depression or mental health yes. issues yeah. like they're a great target sadly for something that's dark and demonic and whether or not that played into it or not, it does make me wonder if yeah. this thing was there with your neighbor for a long time and maybe it had just gotten so powerful that mm -hmm. it did kind of bleed over into your apartment and what you were witnessing by trying to banish it yeah. was it being like sucked back and yeah. all that energy being so concentrated around this one poor guy who was already going through a ton. It's just, uh, it's so frustrating because it's hard to know. It's hard to know. And, and I'll say, it, I, yeah. I, I, it never fucked with me, is the thing. <laughs> like, I witnessed everything that was happening. And, like, I was convinced that this place was haunted and there was something going on in here. And it was, it scared me. But it, yeah. it never, like, you know, poked at me or, like, did, and, but would do stuff to my girlfriend, who I think was actually, at the time, like, in our lives, I think was probably a little bit more vulnerable than me at that time. And I always look back, I'm like, why didn't it fuck with me, right? And I'm like, I, I think that like, maybe it right. didn't think that it and could. And it didn't need to because <laughs> it had other right? people around And I'm you like, that, and it like yep. didn't need to or whatever, I don't know. But like, there's yeah. something too that I oh thought. Oh my gosh, you know? I can't believe this is your one, pa your mm -hmm. one paranormal That's my experience. only real one, like of like paranormal <laughs> stuff. I know it's yeah. a saga, I mean, it's but I'm pretty like, intense. it's crazy. Yeah. And I, I have no clue what's related and what's not, but like that's that's what happened over the course of a few weeks and then a couple of days at, at that apartment. And then after that, there was no nothing. Wow, you never, never saw again. We're there like for like an, a, a, you know the rest of the lease, like nine more months, and nothing. You happened. know, I'm glad to hear that at least yeah. you're you're a neighbor who's concerned. Oof. Like you called the police, you banged on the door, you did all that mm -hmm. and then simultaneously you also acted on the haunting right you didn't just like let the haunting fester you you called out to your resources and tried yeah. to do something so i'm happy to hear that it sounds like you probably won't be haunted ever because you're gonna nip it in the bud immediately <laughs> i hope not i really don't want it you know like <laughs> you don't want it i don't want it it's like let's just you know pick another house man like come on we're breaking up not right here, now you know if you gotta stay here for like one night if you're like you're traveling that's fine but like stay downstairs and don't come upstairs like yeah <laughs> make your bed up when you're done like man see this is like you could do a whole podcast about like kind of like high strange but the paranormal version of it yeah like that's so kind of like what i was hoping like you know expanding the world of like the strange stuff that happens like there's 
Yeah. So many, and you guys oh, talk yeah. about all those kind of things. We all have the time, some suggestions. Like, oh, yeah. We it'd have be lots cool of to stories. expand it beyond just totally. like UAP, right? Dang. Well, we're excited to see what you have in store. And we're big fans of Tenderfoot TV and of you. You were actually one of the first podcasts I ever listened to. Thank you. To. We're big FN fans Vanished of you guys. Was, I think it was the oh, really? first. Yeah. Th the third podcast I'd ever listened to, but the first like episodic series that I'd ever listened to and told every single one of my coworkers about it, every single one of my That's friends. Awesome. Yep. And then. <laughs> was that season one yeah, back yeah. then? Or no, you had or just you come dive out into it. first? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was like waiting oh, okay. for the next so, like, yeah, episode, the getting yeah. the live updates, yeah. screaming as you solve the case. <laughs> that was a crazy yes. time. Yeah. 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 That's, that was. That's wild. That's awesome, though. Is there anything else you want to tell our listeners about? They can listen to High Strange for if you listen to podcasts. Yeah. I mean, just what else like are you working on? if they haven't checked out High Strange, definitely check out High Strange. I think you'll you'll probably enjoy it. Um, tons of other stuff that we're working on um, in this space. If you know, if, if they don't listen to Radio Rental, that's a that's a fun show with spooky stories, sometimes some paranormal kinds of things. Um, but yeah, we're working on a whole bunch of stuff this year that you know is super exciting. You know, another up and vanish season that I'm working on. Um, but yeah, just if you like uh High Strange, then you might like some of our other shows and give them a shot. Yeah. And we'll we're be listening to yours. everything. So thank you. I'm we'll we're fans of you guys you, too. Pain. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for joining us, Payne. Absolutely. This was fun. Very fun. We could talk about this all the time. All right. We say something we say something at the end as our like tagline, and you're welcome to whisper okay. it with us if you'd like. I say we will see you on the other side. And Sabrina okay. whispers can I whisper it? it. You can whisper it. We can Payne, you and I can whisper. Yeah. See you on the other side. We will. See you on the you on other the side. side. <laughs> I, too fast. I, knew, I, I told you it was slower. I knew you were <laughs>